there everybody is little Shongile. And she wasn't found by us, I'm afraid. But we have driven past here, so she must have been around here. This is Twin Dams, quite close to where um, Hosanna's favorite pan is, Baboon Pan. In fact, all of their favorite pans on. What she's doing, whoops, the daisies, she's, <laughs> she's playing. Remember that water monitor that they caught two weeks ago? That water monitor that they caught three weeks ago or two weeks ago and she hung in, it must have been this very tree. She's now kind of playing with it or semi-eating it. You hear the guinea fowl shouting, so angry. <laughs> it's right here and it's so irritated. Shonhila's going back up the tree now with her lizard. I'm going to just try and move and see if we can't get a slightly better look. The ground here is not going to make that very easy. This has got stuck written all over it. Now she's playing with what must be the stinkiest lizard in all the low felt. Here we are. Must be so disgusting. I mean that thing's now three weeks old. Ugh. Two weeks old. Two weeks old. Yeah, really not a good time to be a lizard, as Kirsten says. She's obviously bored. Now, we haven't seen her be... <laughs> we haven't seen her being quite this playful. I don't think for some time. Horsana's also always messing around, but she often isn't. Now, I'm pretty sure he must be pretty close by here, and they're waiting for Mum, clearly. I mean, the agility in this tree is quite astounding. And it was a massive, massive water monitor, that. Oh, she's dropped it down. And thank goodness we've managed to get her on cat day. Oh, she's hissing. I wonder if her brother isn't around here. Either that or she's got a hairball. I think she's got a hairball. Can you hear her going? <sighs> Thank goodness we found a cat on cat today. Can you imagine we hadn't? All right, you know what, Craig? We're gonna go around the other side. I think the light is gonna be better that side. Batman, you're gonna to have to watch your head here. No thorns, but um, the substantial amount of green foliage I think our signal will be all right. Is our signal all right, Max Smith? Where has the leopard gone? I think the leopard has departed. The leopard has departed the tree. That is deeply, deeply irksome. She's, she's gone off in here somewhere. Oh, there she is. You see her there, Craig? She's just between the two forks of this tree, and she's just lying in the shade there. Just sort of straight over the top of my right shoulder. Zoom in there. You'll get her. You got her there. She's almost invisible. In fact, she is invisible. Let's move again. 
the smell coming off that lizard is quite vile. Let's watch the thorns there, Craig. There, you'll get a view there. Can you see her? Just, yeah, there you are. Alright, stay zoomed in there and I'll move. I might be able to hear quite a lot of game drive radio activity now. Yes, they do indeed. Now, oh, sorry, does have that name again, Kirsten? Cleb Bayon. Cleb Bayon, you want to know if these leopards ever roll in unpleasant dung and that sort of thing to mask their scent. I'm not sure if they do that, but they certainly roll in dung and I'm not, I mean, we think it's probably to try and mask their scent and we've often seen them do it with buffalo dung. They often also eat fresh buffalo dung, which is quite interesting. I'm just going to wait for this vehicle to move out the way and then we'll go into that position where they were. move slowly now. Shongalai seems to be settled slightly now. Are you going to stay? And there we go. That's a nice view. Hello, my dear. Justin, you want me to try and describe the smell? Justin, it's very difficult to describe. I mean, it has the flavor of, um, uh, I suppose, dog dung, if you've ever smelt dog dung, which I'm sure you have. Uh, but not quite that. The best way to do it would be to go and find yourself a steak um, at the nearest convenience store and place it in the sun or on your roof for the next week and then go and smell it afterwards. In fact, now if, if you're, and that's only if you're having summer where you are now. So you need to wait for summer, Justin. Then you put a big stake on the roof for a week and then smell it after a week. And that is basically what you're going to come up with here. It's very difficult to describe. It just, it smells like rotting flesh. She is very elegant, our little Shungile. And I said a little while back that I thought she was going to look a bit like Shadow. But I'm not sure that she is. I'm just going to help Kevin in here. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, no problem. I'm just helping them into the sighting from Buffleshook. Another vehicle from Buffleshook is coming through. And she is much paler than her brother. Her brother is very gold. Oh, look at the top of her nose there. I think she's got a little bit of a scratch a scar already on her young face. And listen to all the insects going now as it starts to heat up. A whole lot of cicadas, different species. And uh, Craig has spotted a beautiful tick on her. Well done, Craig. Are you a fan of the tick, Craig? That is quite a tick, isn't it? Ugh. Now, oh, she really is a very pretty little creature. 
and the agility is just astounding. I mean, to jump around in those branches when you've got four legs designed for running and sort of walking, it's not like she's got the prehensile limbs of um, uh, of a primate. The sense of balance and timing is just exquisite. Now she's looking down towards the dam and I wonder if Shong, at least Ho Sanar, is not somewhere around there. This is so encouraging. I'm glad they're here. I just had a feeling today that they might be around here and that feeling is not based on any form of clairvoyance. It's based on the fact that they are often around here. So it was this statistical guess. And I think they're going to wait here for Mum, who's going to be somewhere between here and Sydney's dam. Either having a rest, or perhaps feeding on a carcass for a little while before she comes back to take them towards it. Hmm. Now her eyes, when she was born, were very brown. And they've softened slightly to a very gold colour. Much richer, I think, than her brothers and her mothers. Oh, they're lovely. They're slightly browner than the others. Oh, now, Eric... You say that uh, you're in, <laughs> Eric. You're in Canada, and you're wondering. Ooh, you're wondering if a leopard spots changes as they get older, Eric. As we all know, a leopard doesn't change its spots. You know the old cliche. The old cliche, Eric, is absolutely accurate. Their, um, their, their spots don't change at all. They just get bigger.